tonight. Terror in Australia. Yet another stabbing incident plagues the nation, this time on a religious figure. The motive behind the attack remaining unclear. A diplomatic dance. China's Xi and Germany's Scholz meet in Beijing as the world struggles to keep conflict at bay. Two leaders putting on a balancing act to soothe tense ties. Israel's response. Global allies continue to discuss the future of Israel-Iran relations, urging for restraint in replies. And Pompeii's secret. Masterpieces hidden for centuries finally see the light of day. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Vedana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you very much for tuning in. You're watching World News Tonight. Well, over the past 24 hours, we saw numerous updates to bring to you from Gaza situation all the way to the UK. But before that, we have some developing news on yet more stabbing attacks in Australia. Australia is reeling from its second stabbing incident in three days. New South Wales State Police Commissioner Karen Webb said that the knife attack on an Assyrian church bishop in Sydney the day before was a terrorist act. I declared that it was a terrorist incident. Strike Force Petrina has been established to investigate that side of the events last night. At least four people were injured in the attack at the Good Shepherd Church in Sydney's Wakeley suburb, including Bishop Ma Murray Emmanuel, when a man lunged at him with a knife during a service that was live-streamed on Monday. The incident triggered clashes between police and an angry crowd of the bishop's followers who demanded the attacker be handed over to them. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said there was no place in Australia for violent extremism. This is a disturbing incident. There is no place for violence in our community. There is no place for violent extremism. We are a peace-loving nation. This is a time to unite, not divide as a community and as a country. Bishop Emmanuel's live-streamed sermons attract a global audience and his clips rack up hundreds of thousands of views online. And we have yet more updates on the ground relating to this breaking story with preliminary investigations starting to take off relating to the reason behind the incident. For more on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent Binet Sanratha from Melbourne in Australia. What are the latest developments on the story, Binet? Anuradhi, Bishop Ma Marie Emmanuel was presiding over a service that was being live-streamed at Christ the Good Shepherd Church in the western suburb of Wakeley when an alleged attacker was seen charging toward him. Police said video of the attack spread quickly on social media, prompting angry members of the community, community to converge on the church. Footage showed chaotic scenes as people threw objects at police cars. Police Commissioner Webb said that the suspect, who has not been named, had not been on any terror watch list. Police believe he was acting alone, but emphasized the investigation is in its, is in its preliminary stages. Back to you, Anuravi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than a world news special correspondent Binet Senviratna from Melbourne in Australia. Thanks again. Meanwhile, it's a structural tragedy. A fire hit the old stock exchange, one of the Danish capital's most iconic buildings, engulfing its spire, which collapsed onto the roof. Live video from local media showed people carrying large paintings away from the building to save them from the flames. The historic building, whose spire was shaped as the tails of four dragons intertwined, had been under renovation when the fire broke out. The Dutch Renaissance-style building no longer houses the Danish stock exchange but serves as headquarters for the Danish Chamber of Commerce. Copenhagen police asked people to avoid driving in the inner part of the city due to the blaze. We're over in Asia now as Chinese President Xi Jinping said two-way ties with Germany would continue to develop steadily as long as both sides sought common ground and respected each other and their differences. They should also be wary of protectionism and insist on objectively examining production capacity issues. She was quoted as saying by Chinese state television during a bilateral meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz over in Beijing. 
noting that this year marks the 10th anniversary of the establishment of China Germany all round strategic partnership she said that the two countries relations have maintained sound and steady development despite the major changes of the international landscape she underscored the importance of cooperation among major countries in addressing challenges and risks faced by human society in a world that is undergoing accelerated changes unseen in a century the consolidation of the development of relations between china and germany the world's second and third largest economies go beyond the bilateral scope and hold increasing significant influence over the eurasian continent and even the world as a whole We're in India now where the glorified biopic on the early 20th century Hindu nationalist ideologue called independent warrior Savarkar hits Indian theaters just weeks ahead of a national vote that is set to determine the political direction of the country for the next 5 years. The movie coincides with a cluster of upcoming Bollywood releases based on polarizing issues which either promote Modi and his government's political agenda or lambast his critics. In Mumbai a biopic of political figure Savarkar the father of Hindu nationalist ideology and an admirer of Adolf Hitler has been playing in this theater for almost a month Among Savarkar's fans are the ruling party the BJP and Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself As India heads to its general elections nearly a dozen films promoting the Hindutva ideology are being brought out by filmmakers Jahangir National University is one of them Taking the name from Delhi's prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru University, the film depicts it as an institute destroying the country with its leftist and Islamist views. Vinay Sharma, director of the film, denies being inspired by the BJP narrative. <laughs> Sharma claims that no political party has funded his film, but local media investigations allegedly found a link between the film producer and the BJP. Cinema professor Ira Bhaskar is worried by the growing trend of using Bollywood to spread Hindu nationalism. In the last elections in 2019, a biopic of Prime Minister Modi was barred from release just before the polls by the Election Commission of India after opposition parties raised their concerns. We're going in for a short commercial break now. We'll be right back with more key global updates. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're continuing with updates on the Gaza conflict now. A bakery in Gaza City has started operating for the first time in 6 months with aid from the World Food Program providing desperately needed food in a part of the territory where a UN backed report has warned of imminent famine. Long lines snaked outside a bakery in Gaza City on Sunday as it started operating again for the first time in 6 months. It reopened with help from the World Food Program and is providing desperately needed food in a part of the territory where the United Nations has warned of imminent famine. Abdul Rahman Al Jadba scored a bag of bread for his family. He says he had been forced to feed his children bread made with flour mixed with sand. Israel's offensive in the Gaza Strip has turned much of the territory into a wasteland with an unfolding humanitarian catastrophe since October. That's when the militant Islamist group Hamas ignited war by storming southern Israel. Israel has faced increased international pressure to let more aid into the Gaza Strip since it targeted an aid convoy on April 1st, killing international relief workers. The World Food Program says it's been using a new coordinated route to get aid into northern Gaza. It says it was able to make its first delivery to the bakery on Saturday with enough flour to make 14,000 bread parcels a day. A spokesperson said the hope is to expand to three more bakeries and keep up regular deliveries. At home, Al Jadba says the bakery bread cost about 5 shekels or just over a dollar. 10 days ago, it would have cost 20 times as much. Israel, which denies hindering humanitarian relief to Gaza, has said that aid is moving into Gaza more quickly. But the amount is disputed and the United Nations says it is still much less than the bare minimum to meet humanitarian needs.
And on Israel's lament now, Rishi Sunak has called on all sides to show restraint after Iran's attack on Israel. The PM said that he would speak to his Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu to express solidarity and also discuss how to prevent further escalation. For more of this, we have other than world news special correspondent Don Kaluarachi from London in the UK. Yes, Anuradhi. Mr. Sunak told MPs Iran's actions have been reckless and dangerous. Tehran launched more than 300 drones and missiles at Israel in retaliation for a deadly airstrike on its consulate in Damascus. In a statement to the House of Commons, Mr. Sunak confirmed that the RAF had intercepted a number of Iranian drones and said that the Air Force was the best of the best. He said that Iran has once again shown its true colors and that its attack has been intent on further destabilizing the Middle East. Turning to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas, he said that nothing that happened over the last 48 hours affects their position on Gaza. Back to you, Anuradhi. All right, thank you very much for the update. That was Don Kaluarachi from London in the UK. Thanks again. And on the road to the White House tonight, according to new polls, American voters are growing much more supportive of Joe Biden's handling of the U.S. economy. But they continue to remain unsettled by persistent inflation, especially with rising fuel prices. The number of registered voters who approve of Biden's handling of the economy jumped 5 percentage points in the past month according to the latest survey conducted for the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. But the polls showed higher prices continue to weigh on voter sentiment, with nearly four in five voters citing inflation among their biggest sources of financial stress and almost three quarters saying food prices were having the biggest impact on their finances. The poll also revealed a sharp increase in concern about the price at the pump, with 52% saying petrol had been impact on their financial situation, up from 47% last month. And over in Myanmar now, resistance fighters raise their own banner at a newly captured army base as a senior rebel commander vowed that they would hold a strategic area near the Thai border. Myanmar resistance fighters hoisted their own banner at a newly captured army base on Monday as a senior rebel commander vowed to hold a strategic area near the Thai border. The key trading town of Miawadi was taken by fighters linked to the Armed Ethnic Karen National Union, or KNU, less than a week ago. Its fall marked another battlefield loss for the powerful military regime that seized control in 2021 from an elected government led by Aung San Suu Kyi, who remains in detention. Simmering anger against the junta has turned into a nationwide armed resistance movement. Since October, the army has lost control of key areas near its borders with both India and China to a loose coalition of allied resistance forces. The loss of Miawadi at the Thai border could further dent trade revenue for the junta. A spokesperson for the military government did not answer calls on Monday. The junta's leader said in a speech last month the forces fighting the military were, quote, destroying the path towards forming a union based on democratic values and federalism. While the rebels celebrated Monday, reporters in Miawadi could hear airstrikes as fighting raged on the front lines about 25 miles to the west, where junta reinforcements were trying to retake the area. Let's go in for a short commercial break now. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. We have some interesting news for you tonight. The ancient city of Pompeii has yielded more of its treasures in the form of sophisticated fresco paintings. Researchers with the archaeological park of Pompeii shared footage of the artworks which have been sealed away since the Roman city was buried in a volcanic eruption in 79 CE. The ancient city of Pompeii has yielded more of its treasures, this time in the form of sophisticated fresco paintings. 
Researchers with the archaeological park of Pompeii shared footage of the artworks, which have been sealed away since the Roman city was buried in a volcanic eruption in 79 CE. Archaeologists believe the art shows scenes from Greek mythology. One of the paintings depicts Helen of Troy meeting her suitor Paris. Another fresco shows the god Apollo pursuing a romantic interest, the priestess Cassandra. These paintings were a form of entertainment, perhaps even forerunners of cinema. The director of the Pompeii site noted that the banquet room walls on which the paintings were done were painted black, the better to hide smoke from oil lamps. Reportedly, the play of lamplight on the paintings gave the impression of movement. The dig also revealed tiled mosaics in the floors of the structure. These 2,000-year-old finds likely won't be the last ones uncovered in Pompeii. Roughly a third of the city has yet to be excavated, meaning that more striking scenes such as these may soon see the light of day once again. But it's certainly art for the ages. They're timeless masterpieces that now have been perfectly preserved. But that's all the stories we've got to report to you on World News Tonight. Join us again next time for more key updates from across the globe. Till then, good night.